The environmental cycles. Water. Water covers 70% of the Earth's surface and is vital for all known forms of life. While it can take different forms, ice, fresh water, underground water, saline water, and atmospheric water, depending on a wide range of climate variables, its total amount always remains constant. Water on Earth gets, in fact, recycled as it moves through processes of evaporation, evapotranspiration, and sublimation, condensation, precipitation, runoff, and infiltration. We can think of the water cycle beginning with its 97% of salt water stored in oceans and seas being heated by the sun and evaporating into the air. There, currents moving upwardly bring the vapor into the atmosphere, where it's cooled down by lower temperatures and subsequently condensed into clouds. When cloud particles collide, they gain volume and consequently fall down on the lower atmospheric layers in the form of precipitation, rain, or snow. Some of the water falling back to Earth can accumulate as ice caps and glaciers, where they will either melt or get back to the atmosphere via sublimation. Other water infiltrates the soil, replenishing underground aquifers, getting absorbed by vegetation, which will return it to the atmosphere via a process called evapotranspiration or becoming groundwater discharge. More water gets stored in lakes or flows over the ground as surface runoff, entering rivers and ultimately finding its way back to the oceans. Human interferences that alter and harm the water cycle are many, and some are rapidly leading us to a dreadful future. Large-scale geoengineering projects for flood control, water supply, and irrigation make fresh water available for the following human activities. Agriculture, 70%. Industry, 20%. And household consumption, 10%. Obviously, withdrawal of fresh water for human use causes a modification of the natural hydrogeological cycle. But the damage is not limited to these alterations. Arguably, even more dangerous is the water contamination that follows. Humans are, in fact, polluting water, mainly with rapidly increasing inputs of nitrogen and phosphorus for enhanced production in agriculture and livestock farms. Fertilizers, but also animal waste, contaminate drinking water supplies. Industrial processes release heavy metals such as arsenic, cadmium, and mercury into water, while petrochemical operations cause oil spills into the ocean and coastal waters. Urban development is the cause of large quantities of seemingly negligible amounts of chemicals and other pollutants around homes that eventually get picked up and carried via storm drains to surface waters. Dumps and landfills with inappropriate leachate collection and treatment systems can contaminate groundwater supplies. Transportation contributes significantly to the pollution of the hydrosphere in various ways, ranging from air pollution fallouts to the construction and maintenance of infrastructure such as roads, railways, and ports. Deforestation is another harmful activity, as trees help perpetuate the water cycle by returning water vapor back into the atmosphere. If drastic actions are not taken immediately, the consequences of what we are doing are going to be tremendous, with the first impact to be felt by the 3% of fresh water currently available to humans.